Hello and welcome to Antiques Appraisal Day. This is um, benefiting the Carroll County Historical Society. It's a nonprofit, and uh, a lot of people really appreciate all the services and history that uh, the Historical Society provides. We're here today at uh, Grace Lutheran Church on Carroll Street, and we have a whole line of tables of our uh, antique appraisers, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting day. Some people are going to find out that what they brought is really worth something, and then on the other hand, some people may be disappointed, but a lot of the items they bring have uh, family history to them, so they can, they can cherish that. We have a lot of good sponsors. In fact, the village people, Grace Lutheran, we have a whole list of people from there that, um, that have um, sponsored this uh, event for many, many years. And our sponsors, we have gold sponsors, are Lehigh Cement and the Teeter family. And then our silver sponsors are Glen Bear, Carroll Community College, M&T Bank, and the Nosky Wealth Management Group. And then our bronze sponsors are BB&T, Carroll Lutheran Village, and the New Windsor State Bank. So we're going to uh, go around the room and around the tables where the um, uh, appraisers are and find out, you know, what the people brought today. Okay? Join us. Come on. Seth Shipley is one of our appraisers, our jewelry appraisers today. Seth owns Shipley's Jewelry in Hampstead. So if you've never been there, I suggest you get over to Hampstead, check his shop out. There's a lot of good eating places over there as well. Let's see what, what he's appraising. Come on over. I think Seth is appraising the ring. I am. I'm appraising this Pretty. ring right here. Look at that beautiful ring. Yeah. Oh, that is lovely. It started as earrings, really right. and then they put it in a platinum setting. Oh, so it is platinum. Yeah, the, the base it's, is platinum, the, base platinum. the top part is gold. It looks like we have some interesting artwork here being appraised. We have three frame prints here uh, at ver from various dates. Uh -huh. They um, seem to date probably from the early part of the 20th century, 1920s. Um, the one in the center is a little bit uh, later, probably in the 1950s or 60s, and then the other one over wow. there, uh, I haven't really looked at yet, but we'll get to it. Yeah, there's two of them. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Courtney Wilson is one of our volunteer appraisers again this year. We appreciate that very much. You're welcome, Lynette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of the coloration seems to be a rubbing off a little bit on here, too. So I, I, I think so. And, and uh, so it just it just suggests that uh, it's not not the real thing, but rather a, a good a good knockoff. Uh, in the hundreds, yeah. So it's worth the risk you took on it for sure. Uh, and it certainly has a great uh, visual appeal, as you say. The, the real, the real thing would sit properly, and I think the fact that we've got a little bumpiness there, that, that's not the kind of thing they would take, you know, cut corners on. It would be a very polished and smooth bottom. Um, this is a needlework sampler um, made by Sally Bruce on August 6, 6, 1798, aged 16. And this was a working sample. She was learning how to do needlework. Really? I'm valuing it about $1,200. Really? 1798. It's a, this is, it was, it came to the um, owner rolled. Uh -huh. And so you can see the lines where it was rolled, where it's not as acidic as the other places. Right. Um, it is framed on acid-free mat board, which is good. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah. It's fabulous. Thank you, Nancy. You're Nancy welcome. Gibson has been a volunteer appraiser for years. She does quilts and all kinds of textiles. Fabrics. Yeah, textiles. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. If I had this, and instead of spending hours and hours on it, I'd be doing two things. One is one one you can't because these are colleagues of mine right. in San Diego, right. and I would send so the the other there. Are, it's a good museum in San Diego, mm -hmm. and you could you could send them a good digital color image, and an image of the whole thing, and then an image of this, and an image of this signature, and and art institutions won't value things for you, but they can help identify. How old is that? The doll could have been anywhere from. 
1900 to 1925, uh -huh. but this is probably later rather than earlier. The same molds were used before and after the war, so, but she's in really good shape. She was one that was, she wasn't done particularly well in that she wasn't, um, she was meant to be an inexpensive um, souvenir doll. She doesn't have multiple stroke brows, whereas this one, see how the brows are? Yeah. turn that one around for the camera. That's a pretty doll. See the brows, how they're multiple mm -hmm. strokes. Mm -hmm. That takes more effort. This was just, this was just a toy. Linda, could you tell us a little bit about the stained glass light? It's beautiful. Well, it's slag glass. It was being used as a um, hanging light, but with a fixture that That's actually, yeah, that didn't go with it. It actually mm -hmm. went up through it, and then it rested on an older picture. What might this be worth? We Box. estimated probably between 400 and 600, because mm -hmm. it's really quite lovely. No, no damage. Right. All the slag glass is intact. It's terrible slag. Yeah. It has a lot of this nice uh, articulated uh -huh. borders. So. Very nice. Now I would like to introduce Jennifer Munch. She has been our chairperson for this year's event, and she's put an awful lot of time and work into it and had a fantastic committee as well. So I'm going to let Jennifer tell you about her experience through this past year. Jennifer? Hi, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lynette. Uh, we're excited to bring the Antiques Appraisal Day uh, to Carroll County. This is our 14th time, the 14th annual Antiques Appraisal Day. And uh, it's the result of a year's worth of work. Uh, we have a committee of about a dozen people. We meet once a month and uh, a little bit more frequently as we get closer to the time of the event. There are another 30 volunteers here today in addition to those 12 and then all of the Historical Society staff is here as well. And so it's the result of the work of an awful lot of folks. And uh, but we enjoy doing it. It's fun. We always find interesting stories. We see uh, very interesting things people bring in. And uh, we consider this not only a, a big fundraiser for the Historical Society, but it really is a, a big uh, service that the Historical Society provides to the county uh, and to all the folks around. It's an opportunity for people to get some idea of the story behind something that maybe has belonged to their family for a long time and they know a little bit of the history, they'd like to learn a bit more, and our appraisers are happy to tell them all they know about these objects, as well as give them an idea of the value. And sometimes people find something that they should maybe take a little better care of, or um, maybe they should be thinking about insuring it, or just, uh, just having an idea of the value of what it is that they have. And so this is the sort of thing that the Historical Society does. We don't just collect stuff. Uh, but we help people understand more about their own history, and uh, we invite you to come and uh, not only come again to uh, Antiques Appraisal Day when we have it again next year, but at the same time, come around to the Historical Society and see what else you can learn about your family and its history and this area and all the excitement that has happened here over the centuries. Um, they are synthetic. Um, and they appear to be that. It's hard to, you, you have to use a refractive index to test them. Garnets aren't real expensive, um, so there is a good chance that they are just really nice garnets. Um, um, it lasted very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, I mean, again, and see, this is probably one of those pieces that was done during a more of a depression era where they, they could have used synthetic for, for cutting down cost. It's, it's hard to say. Um, but you can see, you can see the, there's, there's a couple stamps, this little stamp here is European, there's a 9 and 375, is, is how much the parts are of gold versus, um, you know, the content, right? Um, so the stamps right here are really what say a lot. What's interesting is there is a contrast between this metal here and this, which will lead me to believe um, that this might not be gold here, but okay. um, odds are, you know, if they made the piece, there's a good chance that it's, that it's all gold. I do believe the garnets are probably, like I said, synthetic. It's pretty. It's a pretty piece. Um, it dates back probably to um, 20s or 30s. Okay, what are we uh, praising now? Uh, well, we're looking at a World War I bayonet from uh -huh. a German Mauser rifle. Uh, so this would have been used by the Imperial German Army during World War I. Wow. Yep. And the flag in the back? Yeah. The flag is very interesting because it is a 39-star flag, 
which technically never existed because two states were brought into the Union on the same day in 1889 and the president at the time shuffled the documents around so nobody would be 40 and nobody would be 39. So the 40 star flag was officially authorized but the 39 star flag was not. So this is a rarity. Wow, I'll say, that's amazing. It's, it's generally what we refer to as a book with illustrated boards. That just is a fancy name for the hardcover on the outside okay. that has a picture on it. Uh, it was very popular during the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, to have these illustrated boards. And it's sort of, you know, there are some people who collect, uh, you know, only illustrated boards books, and it's sort of neat to have a nice figure of the author on there. Uh, it looks like there were a number of these volumes done. Obviously, this has three works by him, uh, Oliver, including Oliver Twist. And so there are apparently other uh, works of Charles Dickens that has like, uh, you know, Barnaby Rudge and some of the other uh, books he, he had. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out initially if there's any, you know, big variation. Uh, it looks like there may have been as many as 25 volumes. So we, I knew, I knew, you know, Dickens was, was very prolific. Uh, and a uh, couple things on this particular one. Some, the binding is all intact, which is what you particularly like to see on these ones with illustrated boards. The, the difficulty comes when you get inside. The, 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 the paper is really uh, degraded a bit, uh, partly just from the forces of nature, so to speak. It's clearly oxidized, so you see this brown mm -hmm. tone to it. Uh, this is starting to come, a, come apart from the binding and the spine a little bit. So you've got some issues there, some torn pages. Uh, some what we call foxing, which is just a fancy word for they're standing here due to humidity that's gotten into the books as well. And so just generally, it was a mass-produced book on uh, fairly uh, medium-quality paper, so it's just kind of degraded over time due to, due to air, light, and sun, just all right, the makes sense. usual things. Um, is it really as old as it says it is? 1800s? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and it's not a reproduction thing, of something? No, it's not. The backing fabric is probably from the turn of the century, 1890 to 1920. Mm -hmm. It was probably made in the early first half of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pattern that you frequently see in Pennsylvania. And what it's, is it it's, called? I, I can't remember the name of it. The, pa the, the It's so graphic and bright. It's in perfect condition, yes, it and is. it's highly collectible because of that. Hmm. So approximate value? Um, uh, maybe $1,500, maybe. Wow. It, it is Chinese export porcelain, uh, uh, which, um, and, and here's what that whole term meant, okay? <laughs> they, they exported a lot of, literally, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of <laughs> thousands of pieces over a number of decades. And it wasn't just exported here. There's Chinese porce uh, export porcelain in, in England and, and other countries. And so they'd say, hey, Joe, we're doing this for, uh, this is going to America. So the design, we need an eagle, uh -huh. and so on. Um, and and that's not to that's not to to diminish the process or even the, the, the quality. It it it's what what we're saying is that these pieces were made in China. They were made in quantities, and they were sent to different countries. Okay, and so they're they're not. Most of them are not going to be, in this style, are not going to be marked. This is probably from 1895 or so. Really? So it's, 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 it's a neat piece. It's a French piece that uh -huh. was all made, this is made of um, kind of a, um, a plaster. It's not a typical thing that dolls were made mm -hmm. of, but the arms are, are, are bisque, so. And you prepare the body parts as well mm -hmm. as the clothing? Well, yeah, so what I've done, because this is so old, you don't want to mm -hmm. use a synthetic, so I have silk, right. which is typical of, this is all silk that's breaking down, so I'm just, I just kind of added a piece to 
where this is shredded, uh -huh. I'm just replacing parts of it, so I want to keep as much of it as intact. Yeah, you want to keep it as original as possible. And it's really interesting that this is this is just paper. This is like um, stuffed with um, bits of. Um, <laughs> this like this is stuffing from you know over a hundred years ago. So, but. That was uh, to give it a belly, I guess, and it's just like, um, you know, the, the crepe paper, uh -huh. you know, that was, so, so yeah, he's going to, by the end of the day, I can tell be... you're really into dolls. <laughs> I am. I <laughs> Thanks know. for being with sure. us today, Sandy. Thank you. Looks like a southwestern motif, it, it possibly does. American Indian. Well, that's what he said it was. He said it was, a, it was American Indian. He was always in the Southwest. His father traveled since the late Southwest. See, with the um, American Indian crafts, they can vary wildly. You know, it could be worth seventy-five dollars. It could be worth four thousand dollars. But so, but you've got the name, so that's a wonderful beginning. Yeah, it could be almost any tribe. And could just be a souvenir piece that's exactly. not necessarily a, a, a Native in that American style. Ending. Yeah, just done in that style. Since we can't find anything on the name, that's the, at least you have that, that will pinpoint everything. Maybe he'd like to see that. But maybe one of the viewers will know what that is. <laughs> it is a signed piece. It is marked on the bottom, but yeah, not, it looks like an old piece. But we're unable to find anything on this person. I've huh. written down the name so I can interpret it in many different ways. And now I would like to introduce Fred Teeter, who is our executive director, has been doing a fantastic job for the past 14 months when he came on board. And uh, I'm going to just turn it over to, to you now, Fred, and you can tell them about the Historical Society. Very good. Thank very you, good. Lynette. You're very, welcome. Very, Thank very you. Very much. Uh, well, um, the, uh, the Historical Society is a 75-year-old this year organization devoted to collecting, preserving uh, artifacts and documents about the history of Carroll County, the people, the places, the things of Carroll County that make our heritage important, and preserving those things and educating people about uh, that heritage uh, for generations to come. We've been in business since 1939. We were founded to preserve uh, the home of Mary Shellman on East Main Street, 206 East Main, uh, a building built in, in 1807 and yeah, occupied by some of our early, fa early county visionaries and, and important business people. Uh, over the years, it, it has, uh, it's been a showcase for the first telephone exchange uh, uh, system introduced in Carroll County. Mary Shellman was a, an early advocate of telephone service. And uh, we've, had, uh, we've had, the building has actually been a, a kind of a winter tour type exhibit over the years. Uh, at one time, when I was growing up here in Carroll County, you could go, go as, a, uh, as an elementary school kid and visit each room and see something different in each room. There would be a doll collection, there would be a collection of glass, there would be a collection of, of, of uh, dinnerware, a uh, collection of farm implements, things like that. Today, uh, it is uh, decorated to the year 1820, and you can walk through and see all kinds of really interesting how people lived in the, in the 18, uh, in 1820 or so. Um, there are all kinds of th activities that the Historical Society produces. Once a month, we do the Box Lunch Talk program. Uh, which uh, Community Media Center is a very uh, a fine supporter of. We're proud to have that partnership. Uh, uh, we have a um, uh, we have uh, special events throughout the year. This being our 75th year, we're producing a huge gala at Antrim 1844 in November on a Friday evening. It's been sold out for six months. That should tell you something about the uh, power and, and, uh, and, and support that we have among our uh, almost 1,000 members uh, here in Carroll County. So it's a, it's a great organization. We have, we have galleries and exhibits at uh, 206, 210, and 216 East Main Street. Uh, Westminster's oldest part of the city. So come on by and see us. So you have quite a few interesting items. What's the one there with the blue on the corner there? The box. That he believes to be uh, hand painted um, and it's an English piece. Uh huh. And it is, what did he say, porcelain? Wow. I think it's porcelain. Yeah. Yeah. And, what's and I believe this to be, um, it's beautiful when it's clean. Uh, this is all sterling oh, silver, I think. A spoon in there. And I think that that is for honey. Perfect. The bee with the honey. I think. Ooh. 
Now you were saying this is a very well-known Italian painter. I love this frame too. Yes, Rapari, uh, well-known back in the late 1800s and through the early 1900s. And, and, and this is, uh, I'm, we're just assuming it's like a, a little over 100 years old. So late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in that range. We're thinking, you know. I guess we'll find out today, maybe. That's right. right. <laughs> These are all passed down from my great-grandmother to my grandmother, and so we don't really know how old this is, but this is this has been around also for a uh -huh. long time too. So. Wow. And, and what, is, what is this painted on? It's, it's like a silk. Isn't that silk? Hat? Yes. It seems like a silk type of a. You know, I mean, it's, you can see the threads. Yeah. See how the texture. Right. Yeah. 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 And how old is it? Do you know? We're assuming it's the same. About the same time. The same time. It's more old. I'm not really sure. This one we know because we researched this a little bit. It's vintage. Do you have them on display in your house? Yeah. They you? hang on the walls. Hang on the walls. Yeah. They Beautiful. Hang on. Wow, well that, that is going to be really interesting to find out what they're right. worth. Yeah. Exactly, we've had them and then you see all the shows and you're like, yeah. oh, why not give it a try and see, yeah. what, see what they're right. worth. Well, and, so, and we want to support the historical society also. Well, we really appreciate that. Yep. Thank you so much you're and welcome. good luck. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, this is beautiful. What's the story behind this that? Oh, I don't know. That's why we brought it here. Your husband bought it? He bought it. Um, he bought all of these. We have a lot of clocks in the house. <laughs> I can't bring any more than this. Wow. And we have this interesting thing. Yeah, we have a lot of these types of Marks, toys. But this oh is the goodness. original box that it came in. Whoopie car. Oh, yeah. Kind of creepy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. creepy, and it winds up. It has a. Uh, it still works. Yeah. It does. Oh, that is a light. How old? The is head that? moves around when you wind it. Really? Yeah. So I'm not it's sure exactly. I think these were like in the 20s, but I'm not that's, entirely that's sure. Remarkable so. the condition that thing is in.